more thankful that God brought me the truth. Yes, sir. That God revealed his, he chose to reveal his son in our lives today. And he chose to give us a revelation of the body of Christ. I began to rethink of that scripture over in Ephesians chapter 4. And it goes with this song, but look at that in chapter 4 and verse 1. You know, we've read it and we've read it, but this is what God's done for us. God's revealed Christ to us. He didn't just bring us to church today. He brought us to the only church that's been home. He brought us to the only place where his name can be preached properly. He brought us to the only place where we can be baptized in his name. That can happen anywhere else. It's, it's nice to say that everyone's going to church, but aren't you glad that God brought you to the church? And that might, find, that might sound highfalutin, you know? That might found, sound sedic, a stuck up, or aloof. But the reality is, is that you are in the only church in Benham. Right. That's the fact of it. Right. That's, I mean, I mean, I sit well with every woman. That's the fact of it. That there's nowhere else in Benham. There's no else in Barron County, really, where you're going to receive this message of the body of Christ. Amen. And the way we receive it here, we should praise the Lord for that. Amen. Because God didn't have to reveal that to us. And it's not about the numbers that show and don't show, but it's a message that can change your life. Oh, Hallelujah. We receive a message that's changed our life. Yes. Look at this. I therefore, prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, walk worthy of vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, and with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. That's not taught everyone. Forbearing one another in love, working on your spirit, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bonds of peace. I remember when I first showed up, they said, Brother, don't forget what you're working on. Don't forget we're working on our spirit here. We're working on having the right spirit in every situation. Yeah. We're working to build our life so strong with a rock that nothing moves us. Yes, sir. See, that's what's overcoming really is. Oh, God. Is that nothing moves you off the rock. Because we're planted on the rock. Because there's no other, then there's only was one foundation. See, there's only one foundation built. In Jesus Christ being that chief cornerstone. Things that you know I begin to think about our life tries to put stuff on the foundation. They give me an excuse to get off the rock, to get away from the mountain. Mm -hmm. But I want to stay close to the mountain. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to, when our brother Gaja gave us them, the doors open, I want to find myself here in church. Yes, sir. I want to be here because there's not life anywhere else. If I can look at it in that way, how urgent it is to be here. And not just to be here, but to enter his course with, his course with praise. His case with thanksgiving. Begin to worship God when I get here. They can begin to give God all I can while I'm here. So God can help me. Hallelujah. Well, look at this. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called, and one hope of your calling. There's only one body. There's only one spirit. There's only one body of Christ. There's only one place on the earth where God has separated people from a people and given them a message to overcome. And I appreciate that today, don't you? I'm glad that God's brought me to this place and begin to touch my mind. You know, I begin to think, you know, we have people, things happen, people come and they go, unfortunately. Young people grow up and they forget, you know, what I'm praying is that everyone who walks through these doors gets a vision of Jesus. Right. Uh, gets a vision of the body of Christ. Gets a vision of what God's doing in the earth. Because once you have the vision, there's nowhere else you can go. There's, you know, Jesus asked Peter, said, well, you know, he said, well, whom shall we go? Where shall we go, Lord? You alone have the words of life. Isn't that right, Brother Mark? He alone had the word of life. Yes, sir. This is the only rock that is qualified to build my life on. Right. The only place. Hallelujah. Right. And I know that don't always sound right to people, but I'm glad that God brought me to the winningest team in church. Yes. I'm glad God brought me to the body of Christ. Yes, sir. And touched my mind. And God the Father, what was that? One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all, through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said when he ascended up on heaven he laid captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now he that ascended what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up, up far above all heavens. Religious and otherwise. And he might fill all things. And look at this. You know this is one of the greatest things that I read in the Bible. When I first came, I didn't look nearly as good as, 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 as Brother Main here with us today. And I, you look good, brother. Praise the Lord for you. I'm glad. You know what I've noticed? You clap on every song. <laughs> you do. You clap on every song. <laughs> you know God bless obedience. Mm -hmm. The song say clap, you should clap. 
The song says praise the Lord. You should praise the Lord. The song says raise your hands. It's not a, it's not a, you should wait, raise your hands. Because it's not about if I feel like clapping or praise the Lord or raise my hands. But God blesses obedience. Yes, sir. God's blesses when I do what I'm instructed to do. God would help me because if I come in, I don't feel like worshiping. Guess what happens when I start worshiping? Yeah. Guess what happens when I start clapping my hands? Yeah. Guess what happens when I start singing a song? Saturday night, I promise I love singing. So the torch tried to move me over here. I was blocking away. But I kept singing. Praise the Lord. So keep clapping, brother. Keep clapping. God will bless you for that. But this is where God has given men, has given us apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. For what? The perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. And for the edifying of the body of Christ. For building the church on the rock today. So I'm just so thankful today. I'm so encouraged today to be here today in the body of Christ. To be in a place where I'm being taught how to live. How to live right. And not to give myself excuses because of my bad spirit and my ignorant mind. Not to let myself get moved off the rock. Not allow myself to get moved away from the mountain. You know we have to you know, this, this, this message, this revelation is special. Amen. It's special. And I think over the years, sometimes, you know, people, things happen. We have tragedy. We just heard in, in Kentucky. You know, there's always a reason to trade in this revelation. There's always a reason. There's always circumstances to trade in this revelation. Act as though God didn't reveal himself to you. All right. There's always a reason. There's always hurt. There's always pain. There's always something. But I admonish you today, saints, to hold on to this precious pearl. To hold on to this revelation of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. To hold on to this work that God is doing in your life. Because you, we can't be perfected out on the outside. But we got to come to the potter's house to be perfected. Hallelujah. We got to come to the banqueting house today to be perfected. Because that's what we're here for. We have to come to the rock. Because, you know, when things get really hot, people are going to run to the mountains, and they're going to say, fall on us. And they won't be any cover. But I want to get close to the rock while I can. I want to get close to the mountain while I can. I want to get this understanding in my mind while I can. I want to understand what I'm here for while I have the opportunity. Because this is what God brought us for. God bless you today. Praise God. Praise God for being here tonight and uh, appreciate the songs that has been given to us and uh, the words tonight. And uh, of course those words uh, of the church and the revelation of the church is of course offensive to people. I've seen people leave because of they said he said, you're the only church. I'm just saying what God said. And, uh, and me and me, even Pastor Charles had a conversation yesterday. He stopped and he was asking me about the, they are talking about pipes on preachers being given together. So they've been talking about it for a while. And uh, I said, well, that's fine. I said, that's all good. I said, well, the preachers need to get together first of all. Amen. Because uh, I know I have things that can cause problems and so at least I want to give you the opportunity to go through he said no, I just believe Jesus Christ is the it's a salvation I said I do too but I know it's more than just say I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved I know more than that I I know there's a revelation I mean there's a an experience that every individual has well, I believe you can lose that experience too I believe you can lose it. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, and uh, he, he makes mention of uh, this. He says, uh, <clears throat> verse 1, O brother, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein you stand. The gospel causes you to be able to stand. He said, by which also ye are saved. <coughs> you are saved. If, now why would you throw that in? Yeah. 
Why, why would you add that into the equation? Why wouldn't you just keep right on going by what you are saved? But he said, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Well, I show I said, see, you can believe in vain. You can start uh, at running, but you can quit like any race. The race isn't given to the swift. Neither the battle to the strong. Amen. Time and chance happened to everybody. But Matthew picks it back up and says, but he that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. That's right. Amen. And then we finally got to the point of talking about progressive salvation. I said, now that's what we're talking about. Paul again says in this same book, it was in the second uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 9. He says, but we have this sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves. We all have a sentence of death working. Adam put it in us. But in God which raises the dead, God is able to raise us. In fact, of the matter, God did raise us from the dead. When you received the baptism of the Spirit, God made your soul alive. Raise you from the dead. Ephesians 2, verse 1. You as he quickened, made alive, who was dead, in trespasses, and in sin. When we all walk the same course, walk just like everybody else walked, the same course. That's why people out here today walk in the same course. But it goes on and says here, verse 10, who delivered us from so great a death. <clears throat> Jesus delivered us from so great a death that was the death that Adam put us in. And doeth <clears throat> deliver. I'm talking about three phases of salvation. This progressive salvation. Say, doeth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver. You got three phases of your walk with God. Three phases of your salvation. Saved, being saved, and shall be saved. And that's why we have to stay close to God. Yes. Something that's always trying to knock you out of your square, knock you out of your walk with God. We can see that throughout the Bible. We we got letters after letters after people believed on the Lord. They they went back. They 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 they, they stopped following God. I don't have eternal judgment for nobody. I don't have the, that right to. Try to turn and judge because I don't know when. I don't want to play the thief on the cross stuff. You know? I don't want to play that kind of stuff. You know, I, I, I want to stay far enough away from the shore that I won't mess around and flop back in. Right. Like a fish getting caught, lay him on the bank, he's going to keep trying to flop to get back to where he come from. We got a nature always trying to get back to where it come from. One time or another, it's trying to get back to the sea. The Bible said that the, un, that, that the, this, uh, the ungodly are like a troubled sea. Isaiah that 57. Amen. It's, it's like the, the troubled sea, the last verse, I believe it is. The latter verse is there. Yes, 57 and verse 20. But the wicked are like the troubled sea, when they cannot rest, whose water casts up mire and dirt. See, that's what the sea is out here. The sea is the, the restless, ungodly element. The restless. And Jesus make a statement. He said, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. You can, you can get some rest. I'm telling you, I'm not just talking here. I've had rest, amen, since coming to Jesus Christ. My soul has found its rest. Amen. Praise God. I'm not just saying that for no, because I'm a preacher. You know, I found rest in God. I've made my mistake, but I found my rest in God. I hadn't had a desire to try to go back to the sea. You, are you listening to me? 
Not trying to go back out there. Not trying to figure out what I missed out there. Nothing. I did everything to be done out there. I know I ain't missing nothing but death. And I'm glad I'm escaping that today. Yes, sir. I'm glad I'm able to have all the graveyard. And so uh, we we are having a revelation of the church called out. A lot of people been called out. We ain't only called out people. Amen. No, he don't understand that. It's a, it's, it, it's, we ain't only called out, but God has brought us to the needle in the haystack. God has brought us to a, a place that you just don't find walking down the street. They don't even know who we are. Amen. Are we talking about the body of Christ? Everybody say, I'm the body of Christ too. Yeah. No, you, you say you Luther. You say you Baptist. You say you Methodist. You say Church of God in Christ. You say you Episcopalian. You say Apostolic. You say you Catholic. You say you this. You say you Jehovah's Witness. You say Seventh Day. You don't. You can't be both of them. Amen. Which one are you? Well, That's a revelation. Yes, oh, I gave all that. I talked about all that. I talked. I said that's a revelation. I said I'm going to place proper. I want to get baptized in the name of Jesus. I said, I said, I don't have nobody else's license in my pocket. I'm operating directly under the headship of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. I gave mine back up in 1985. I turned mine in. Thank you, Jesus. Christ is my head. I said, just like he asked, them, them, folks asked those Pharisees in the 4th 5th chapter of Acts, he states that to them, and he said, by what power and by what authority y'all doing this in? You ain't get nothing from us. We, we're not with the with the Sadducees, and you're not with the Pharisees. So who are you operating in? They say in the name of Jesus. He the one called us. He the one that anointed us, and he the one that sent us. So we operate. That's who, that's who we operate in. See, these are revelations, and believe it or not, some people just take it and oh, that ain't no real big. That's a revelation. Everything I'm doing today, Colossians three seventeen. Everything I'm doing in word and deed, I'm doing it in the name of Jesus. Not a PAW, not none of the other organizational head. Praise God, I'm working in the name of Jesus. Praise God. This church is in the name of Jesus. Praise God. And I know there's virgins. Song of Solomon 6 and 8 says there's three scores queens. We believe that's the Roman Catholic Church by revelation. Four scores concubine. We believe that's the Protestant movement. Virgins without number. That's the Pentecostal operation. He said, but my dove come on, come on. and my undefiled is but one. She's the only one of her mother. That came out on the day of Pentecost. God, that's so much. That's so yeah. it's life changing. You see, but you know, if you just talk to people, don't understand it. Say you high polluted and sadistic. Uh, <laughs> we know people can be lost here just like they be lost out there. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, you don't pay the price, you, but you got a message that can put you in the first resurrection. First resurrection. Amen. Revelation twenty and six five. He said, "Blessed holy is he that has part in the first resurrection." Everybody don't talk about uh, uh, verse 6. Everybody don't talk about the first resurrection. Amen. People just waiting on Jesus to come. They live in any kind of way and just believe already when he comes, he's going to go. We don't believe that. We got believe you got to qualify to go with Jesus. <laughs> we don't believe you just can get in any kind of way. You're going to have to love him to get in. I ain't talking about filio him either. I'm talking about God pay him. You ain't just love him like a brother. You ain't gonna love him just like a family. You ain't gonna love him like some old sexual. You gotta love him like he loves you with all your might. Yeah. That's what he said. Love the Lord thy God, do around the six and four. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. All, all, all. God don't want no in between lovers. He wanted me to love him right. Yes, sir. <laughs> What a revelation. Thank you, Lord. Now, we can't do this by ourselves. We understand that. But God wants somebody to put the pedal to the metal. Yes, sir. He wants somebody to get after this here. And as we get after it, he begins to help us get more after of it. Thank Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
And we don't look back out to Egypt. No, sir. Behind us is it's all behind us. It's all behind us. Praise God. So God, out of a place where you can find truth. I told him how we, I travel all over the world. I said, I travel all over the world. And I sit down with preachers. I said, I'll show you. I'm uh, afraid to sit down with you preachers in Benton Hall. I said, I sit I go all over the world. Sit down with preachers. And we discuss Bible. We discuss scriptures and why and wherefores. And I said, that's what we need to do. We need to sit down and talk about the word of God. And find out why I don't believe in some hole in the ground with fire jumping out of it. And I don't know why you believe it either. I don't know why you believe it. That you can live somewhere, a mortal person can live somewhere forever without immortality. When the Bible clearly says, 2 Timothy 1 and 9, that life and immortality. Let me say what else it says in 1 Timothy 9 before it gets there. Who saved us, called us with a holy calling. According, not according to our works, what well, not I did, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. This is the verse. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who abolished death. Adam brought death. Jesus abolished death. And has brought life. It wasn't any life. Come on. Before Jesus brought life. Yeah. yeah. What are we going to do with these scriptures? What do, how do you explain away so clearly yeah. that there's no life until Jesus gives life? Right, right. From Adam, Romans 4, 5, and 12, through Moses, yes, death reigns, no life. Hallelujah. And you still want to give somebody life in the grave, in a hole in the ground. Who has abolished death, brought life and immortality. He brought life and the inability to die. To life through the gospel. Right. Paul just told us in 1 Corinthians 15, it's what calls us to stand. Yeah. Uh, you ain't got it, you're gonna fall. That's right. Ecclesiastes 3 Come on. tells us we're gonna die like a doll. 318. God will have man to know his estate. The state concerning the sons of men that God might manifest, reveal them that they are, that they might see that they themselves are beasts. For that which befall is the son of men. Befall is beasts. What, what, what happens? Even one thing befalls them as the one died, so died the other. Do you mean to tell me that a dog got eternal life? You gonna live forever? No, sir. No, sir. Yea, they all have one breath so that a man has no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. All go to one place, all are dust, and all turn to dust again. Dust thou art, the day you do this, dust thou shall return. You know what they're talking about? They say that's just your body. That you have an eternal soul. You give me one Bible's verse. Give me one, I don't need no two. Give me one Bible verse that said we got an eternal soul. All the way you get an eternal soul, you get a, get in with an eternal God. Come on. That's right. It's through the gospel. Through the gospel. Yeah. No life outside the gospel. There's none out there. And people don't care nothing about you preaching no hell no way no more. <laughs> They'll bring hell to you. <laughs> they don't care nothing about it. That was the other question. What we gonna do for them? I said, I just preach relationship now. Of course, I got to preach. If somebody needs a new birth, except the man is born in the water and the spirit, he can't get in. I told you, you got to have the Holy Ghost, man. That's right. You got to have the baptism of the spirit. Jesus, John 3, gives us what's going to come. Wind blow where it lifts us. Come on. Hear the sound there up. So is everyone, not everyone. some people, not just this denomination and this denomination, but everyone that's born of the Spirit. Yeah, uh, uh, 
Day of Pentecost, Acts 2 and 1, on the day of Pentecost will fully come. That they were in one place and one accord. Suddenly it came a sound from heaven, like a rushing mighty wind, just like Jesus said it would. Fill all the house where they were sitting. Clothes and tongues set upon each of them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak with other tongues. Then I gave him first John, I mean, first Corinthians 14. Want to know about the interpretation of tongues and so forth? I said, the words you're looking for there in clothing. They spoke two parts. They spoke in a heavenly language, and they spoke in. I appreciate Brother Ray to go on this reward. He gave me that gave me that many years ago. Clothe and tongue. They spoke in a language and all those other folk are here. And then they spoke to God. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the mighty God. Mighty God. <laughs> Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Oh, Praise God. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So, you got to be in a place where you can get all the goods. Amen. You got to get, you got to have these things to get in. Praise God. I know people just want to rush people through, want to simile, uh, simile line them through. They're trying to hurt and rush them in. That's why they rush right back out. That's it. <laughs> they ain't get nothing to nail them down. That's why we press it at you all. We press it at everybody that's in here. Get it. Because when the wind blows and it will, and when the rain comes and it is, you stand it on the rock. Yes, Praise God. That whatever come, you be able to stand. Hallelujah. That's right. I'm so glad God brought me out and brought me in. Yes, sir. Began to put those little touches to my life. Caused me to understand this great salvation that we have here today. Yes, sir. Yes, great revelation of the church. Mm -hmm. yes, Amen. God has called us out. Many gonna come in Matthew 7 20. Talks about many gonna come in that day and say, Then we do this. He said, Wherefore, before we get there, he said, Wherefore, by their fruit, ye shall know them. Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Yes, many yes. will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? It was, they said, Then we do it, then we preach. He says, uh, and in thy name we cast out devils. Didn't we do it? And in thy name we done many wonderful work. We fed, we had soup kitchens, we did a lot of work. <laughs> <coughs> then will I profess or confess, that word profess is confession. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I never had no relationship with you. I, I didn't have a no relationship with you. I don't know you. You never got intimate. I never told you to do what you did. You just did. You worked on your own. You hired yourself. You got it. I didn't put you to work. You just started working. See? Depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. You worked out order. That's why we got to make sure we're working in order. That's right. We got to do things in order. We got to find ourselves doing it like God wants us to do it. Yeah. Amen. I, I acknowledge you. The, those that God has set over you to rule over you, bear rule over you. You got to make sure that you're following the precepts and concepts that God said in the Word. Yes. You're an individual. This is a body move. Yes. When the wheel moved, the whole t when, when Israel broke out, the whole camp broke. Well. Nobody decided to get out of there by themselves if they wanted to. That sun would have burnt them up. Mm -hmm. Got out there they want to. That cold desert would have frozen to death. Wild animals would have ate them up. That's why you got to stay together. Praise God. I hate to see people stop missing. Somebody said, you know when a car gets ready to quit, it stops missing. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. You try to check. Come on. I told somebody that the other day. I said, when you stop missing, you get misplaced. That's right. That's what happens. When you stop missing, you get misplaced. Right. You get out of place. Okay. You got to stay close to this here. Yes, sir. This is important to stay close to. Yes, sir. God set this, set this institution up, the church up, because he knows we needed the church. Amen. We needed this woman to 
nurse off of the breast of the woman. Yeah. The old and the new covenant. Yeah. We get the milk of the word of God. Amen. Amen. Here we are today. <clears throat> so what are we going to do? I said, people got to fall in love with God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are we going to do about these people out there? You can go out and evangelize. You can do it, but... People are making the gate so making the gate so short that everybody can just step over in it. I said, I'm keeping the gate high. When I came, it was high. God ain't let the gate down because, you know, he can't find nobody. He said he told lies. I got 7,000. They bow my bow their knees. God ain't let the gate down to let you in. Let me in. He's gonna cause the gate to stay where that. If I wanna come, I gotta come up. Yes, sir. Amen. I gotta do what God said do. Amen. I gotta do what God said. I gotta repent. Got to be baptized in the name of Jesus for remission of sins. Got to receive the Holy Ghost with the Bible evidence of speaking in other tongues. Then I got to put my foot to the ground. I got to begin to walk this walk. Amen. I got to begin to pray. Ask God to give me grace every day. Give me new mercies every day. Praise God. Let me read my Bible. Give me the grace to read my scriptures. Give me the grace to meditate on you day and night so that I can be like a tree planted by the river. Help me to stay around good communication because evil communication corrupts my manner. Help me to stay around people that love God and want God like I want God. Because I realize if I don't stay close, I die. If a limb get broke off a tree, it's going to die. It might look good already for a while, look all right for a while, but it's going to die. Because it's been disconnected from the sap, the life of that tree. Praise God. So sometimes we can uh, make words and say words uh, that's... Uh, <clears throat> That offends people. I ain't trying to take nobody's salvation. I ain't. I'm trying. I want folks to get salvation. Why would I want to take somebody? I don't want you to think this is a brill cream salvation. A little dab will do you. You know. No, a little dab don't do nothing. You gonna need. You gonna need a lot of this to get through the, what, what we're facing. That's right. You gonna need to be soaking wet. Because that fire is going to get so hot, you're going to need everything soaked. You're going to need nothing to be able to just immediately combust. You need to be soaked in the Holy Ghost. Soaked in the Word of God. Able to go through. Because it's a setup. My mind has been uh, redirected. I was going to I may make a mention of Brother <clears throat> Goodwin. He said in this meeting about his opening, which I feel like was timely, uh, about being content, by contentment. That's a tough, that's a tough thing today. Being content, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough, uh, it's a, uh, a tough commodity. And uh, <clears throat> Philippians 4 and uh, there in verse 11, the world puts so much at you that it's hard for you to find yourself being content, satisfied. Praise God. And uh, here in verse 10, he says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at last your care of me has flourished again. It was a giving church supporting Paul's ministry, wherein ye were also careful or anxious, but ye lacked opportunity. They wanted to, but they lacked opportunity to do what they wanted for Paul, to help him to support him. <laughs> He said, not that I speak in respect of want. He wasn't speaking like I'm, you know, I'm in respect in respect of wanting. Yes, yes. He said, for I learned something. Mm -hmm. Come on, preacher. Come on. We need to we need to highlight that, underline that. You gotta learn something. And that's a hard learning. Yes, sir. This is a hard learning. 
in whatever state or whatsoever state I'm in, that we're to be content. Don't tell me that ain't no easy, that's an easy thing. That's something that's got to be practiced. That, that's something that has to be practiced, people of God, of being uh, content, learning contentment, learning that. Because we're such an affluent society. We're such a society with so much stuff. So much stuff. Stuff. I, I just sorry, buy stuff and take care of stuff. You buy stuff and you gotta get a store full of stuff. You bought the stuff up. And, you know. That, that's real. Yes, sir. I'm talking to him. I'm talking to the I'm talking to the oh, oh. <laughs> little brain brain smiling. <laughs> the stuff after stuff. I told him today, I said, I don't want to go on this Goodwill. I said, because they got stuff in there, you don't find some stuff in there. <laughs> hey, you don't, you don't, you don't find some stuff because some stuff is in there. <laughs> All the way you're going to not get no stuff is stay out of the stuff. <laughs> That's another revelation. <laughs> That's another revelation, I'm telling you. Hey, what do you know? I came out with some stuff. <laughs> Cool stuff in there. <laughs> hey Amen. I found I found some stuff. Of, I mean, you couldn't. It was you could not refuse it. <laughs> I mean, brand new stuff that would cost me a bunch of stuff, but I got them. <laughs> and you you tell yourself. Well, that's the deal, man. You can't pass that, huh? I only got a hundred ties. You know, one more tie ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. Contentment. Learning how to be content. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going down through that. That's just a start. I got to have a base to get get, get launched off of. Learning whatever state I'm in. Now Paul was talking about conditions of life, and we're we're uh, you know they just keep throwing stuff at you. Better phones, better computers, better this. Every year they know we're techn 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 technically involved. If it's ever day, I'll be in Haiti and folk walk in Haiti, one of the poorest countries in the world. They still come on, I went to the Philippines. Worse than I think right worse than eight. But they got a phone in their hand. Man. Yeah. All of it is to absorb us. Yes, sir. It absorbs us and but the problem is we're not getting the the Christ out of it. I mean, I, 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 I use it and I do get Christ out of it, but with the majority of what's getting out of it is more than Christ. Because I'm not, I don't have any of my faith. I, I'm, not, I'm not reading this 24-7. And I'm just nobody telling that lie. Yes, sir. However, when I'm not doing that, you're Facebooking. And, uh, I'm trying to, yeah, Snapchat. can you help me? Snapchat. Snapchat. Instagram. Instagram. Twitter. Twitter. Snapchat. Huh? Snapchat. <laughs> and wishing. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> and now they told us we'd come to eBay and Amazon. Yes, sir. They, 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 and we're involved. When we're involved, yeah, Elder, I heard some of the motion cons out of Morse code of the devil. 
Proof. Oh, okay, I'm, that's what it got past the Oh, it's most of the Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I done gave a bunch of devils out to folks, you know, yeah. punk over there. I, I put them out last night when Golden State got the woman on them. I just put a bunch of different people, a lot of smiling faces, a lot of those out there to them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got walking TV. Walking TV. Just a few minutes, I'll just turn right on. We can watch just a few minutes right here. You think we ain't, you think they ain't got us involved? I'm making a point. I'm making a point. So I ain't trying to tell you all that I ain't wrestling like the rest of the folks wrestling. But I'm just telling you, I refuse to go down. Praise God. Because I'm going to use this tech to help me Get out of here. I have had access where we used to go to meet with big old briefcases and stuff. I'm taking this in with me now. I got the whole world in my palm of my hand. I got every library, every biblical access that I need right in the palm of my hand. If I'm ignorant today, it's because I want to be. That I, I don't love God enough to have the information I need opposed to the other information. You got all the other information, why not have this information? Praise God. Amen. Let me tell you, so I use it for God. Amen. I use it for God. What they all I use it for? Amen. But you got other things in Learning how to be content. Y'all ain't hearing me, is you? Contentment is a, it's a challenge. To being satisfied. And they, they are not the instruments of this world are being used to 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 use and using it to to distract us from the purposes. Praise God. We need to have certain things. That's why you got to be careful. Got to be careful. I I I hit my Facebook. People want a a thing, and they use it for pornography. Yeah, you prefer, no, I, I, it looked like you were looking at a penthouse. Tomorrow, accept me. Now you gotta reject that. Amen. I don't know how clue it is. We got all this in front of us. And then if you ain't got it like that, you can just take a few things and you be there. So we gotta learn how to be content with things that we have. Back here in uh, verse 12, I know both how to be a base and how to abound. Now, few people might know that. Few people might know that. How to be a base. Paul was been the when he was preaching that he had been. You read his commentary in 11 chapter, uh, uh, Second Corinthians, 11 chapter, Second Corinthians. He had been through some situations. You get that? He's been shipwrecked, hungry. Yes, sir. Let's get his. See, when he's talking, he's not talking. I don't even know how to get hungry. I don't even have to be hungry because today is because I just didn't stop long enough to go get me nothing to eat. Right I had some money in my pocket. I could have got something to eat. I could stop by one of y'all houses and got something to eat. I know y'all got something there. Yes, right. It wasn't that I did it, just didn't have anything to eat. Praise God. And I can't never remember not having nothing to eat. Everybody got the testimony now. Paul was in that condition. Get 11 chapter, 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. I'm going to keep y'all out. No, I'm not. I'm going to do that. Okay. No Second, going down through there, did I say... Yeah, right here, I suppose, going down through there, right? Go, there it goes. But what I do, I, let's start with this. this. Is I'm looking at the right word, Captain? Huh? Shipwreck. 
Go on down there. All right, here we go. Verse, uh, verse 18. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. You know, Paul was talking about people that was glorified, what all that, what had happened to them, where they were in Christ. He said, seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For you suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For, verse 20, for ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man divide you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak, howbeit wherein whatever, wherein soever any is bold, I speak, I am bold also. Now he's going to give you the pedigree. Let me just uh, uh, get there with him. <clears throat> he says, uh, I speak concerning reproach, verse uh, 22, uh, verse 22. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. These are people talking about Paul. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors, more abundant. In other words, Paul said, I worked harder than all of them. He says, uh, in stripes, above measure. <laughs> they added, it wasn't, you know, four to say, Paul got plenty of them. In prison, more often. In death's oft of the Jews five times receive our forty stripes except one. Thrice was I beaten with rod, once was I stoned. Thrice was I ship suffer shipwreck. A day and a night I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils and dangerous of water, perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in peril in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and in thirst, in fasting often. That means he wouldn't call no fast. Like we say, go break the left fast. He was fasting because he had to fast. Amen. It's a different fast there. There's a folk fasting today, not because they want to. Because the stuff we throw away, we could have gave it to them. We don't say nothing about it. But they'd have been glad to have it. Uh, and hunger and thirst and fast and cold and in nakedness besides those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily all the cares of the churches who is weak and I am not weak who is offended and I and I burn not if I must need glory I will glory of the thing which concerns my infirmities my weaknesses Paul began to give his resume about what he'd been through. Philippians 4, when he said, I've learned how to base and abound, he wasn't just talking just conversation. When we talk about base and abound, instead of having lobster today, I had the base and I had me a, a bologna sandwich. That's what we call it. <laughs> huh? But that was a whole pack of bologna, you know, it wasn't like this. <laughs> Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Praise God. Learn how to be content. They chased me down to give me an extra phone. I ain't no phone, folks. They said, look, you can get a phone. All you got to do is have your medical card and this, you get a phone. <laughs> I don't need it. But they say, man, come on. Just give us the business. Yeah. <laughs> We're living in America. Yes, sir. It's hard to be content. Yes, sir. It's content staying out of the store. 
Oh, that's how you have to do. If you ain't gonna buy nothing, you gotta stay out of them. You gotta lock yourself up. You gotta go on a fast. You gotta go on a fast. <clears throat> If you're talking about hearing what you're saying, you can't talk like when that. You, when you, the reason why I said that is because, you know, you, I said that, that I want to be debt free. So when you go in the store and you see something that you know you don't need, you got, like you said, more than enough, then you think to yourself, now how am I going to be debt free if I'm, I'm continuously spending more than I have to or that I need to? So that money that you're spending on that extra tie or whatever, or suit or whatever, that could be on a bill. Lowering that, that debt. You know, That's right. I was, I was standing in um, a coach store, uh, me and my daughter. I don't shop like that, no way. And, and a, a few months ago. And, and, and of course, you know, they always say, it's a sale, it's a sale. Yeah, it's a sale. And, and, Everything and I, in the store. And, and I had picked up the purse and had the wallet to match and da 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 da. And I, I stood there and I kept looking in the mirror. I said, well, you just deserve it. You work hard. You yeah. deserve it. Go ahead and get it. That's yeah, I'm talking. Yeah. And, and, and then I heard the Lord say, too, but what did you ask me to do? Okay. Ah, you better know I put that purse right back on. Right. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. And uh, we have that challenge of being content. Being content with such things as we have. He says, uh, Back there in Philippians, he says, uh, I know how to be a base and I know how to bound. There are the conditions that put him in that position where he had learned that, where, it, where and in all things I am struck you both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. He said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. That's where and we can, we can do it through Christ that strengthens us. That's right. Now, <clears throat> I understand all that, but doing all that, that's where the challenge is. The challenge is putting that coach purse down. That's right. That's the challenge. Amen. Or whatever it is. And, and 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 even give more to the work of God. And that's how you that's how I in this in this here steps and I in these steps the, the uh in, in five points of being contentment, I ain't even got started on that yet. The last part of it is better to give than to receive. Amen. Contentment comes from giving and not just receiving. Yeah, I won't even get started here, Doctor. I just laid a foundation of that. Learning how to release. That's how you that's that's a, absolutely a principle involved. Get involved in that. You know. And so we're challenged with that stuff. We're challenged with that contentment. Amen. You know. <laughs> Amen. And I can't say I can't get hit with it. The challenge with it. Yes, to read your Bible above reading another thing. When what's wrong with giving God a few verses of scripture? It's a challenge just to fight your way to get that. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of them might have had that problem. 
or just to pick it up and just to read a few, like you're scared to touch it. <laughs> it's going to shock you or something if you, if you pick it up and, and read a few verses. <laughs> Come on, be, be yes, you know. Hey, Amen. Well, we pick it back up on how to be content. This is the message of the hour today. Uh, pushing ourselves to a degree of falling in love with Jesus. And when you're in love with something, you, you find yourself involved with it. That's what it is. Find yourself in, in love with this here. And whatever you're in love with, that's what you're going to give yourself to. Praise God. That's what you're going to give yourself, yourself to. May the Lord bless you tonight. Amen. We're just thankful for uh, this uh, service.